the first the first panel was was kind of sort of establishing the the lay of the land. Uh, for the second panel, uh, we're uh, we're ready to sort of get into more of the more of the kind of the nitty gritty of what you can do with synthetic biology. Uh, you know, I think it's you know it's it's a it's an exciting thing to be sitting here and thinking, um, you know, this is a this is a programmed biological system. That, that, you know, it's a photosynthetic system. This is a programmed biological material that you know some uh, some code turned this turned turned raw materials into this wood. Um, I'm kind of a programmed biological system here that I think I'm working okay. You can you can be the judge of that. Uh, you know, th th there's you know there. there you know, the, if you wonder what are the applications of what you can program with biology, the answer is basically the world around you. Uh, the real question is, do we have the tools to to control that, and what can we do with that? And so we have uh, our, our next panel can can speak a bit to that. Uh, we have uh, Virginia Urson, who's the t the technology prospecting lead and science fellow at Monsanto. Uh, in the middle, you already got a chance to meet Jay Kiesling, uh, as the head of Sin Burke. He's also a professor of biochemical engineering here at Berkeley, and then Steve Evans, who is a fellow at Dow AgroSciences. Um, so thank you to the three of you. And uh, again, there's some some interesting hybrid quality to this to this panel uh, that we have uh, we have private industry, we have academia, we have people who. Uh, I, I think you know, all three of you have really kind of moved back and forth, and you know, they're very are very fluid between the two sides. Um, I'd like to ask a little bit about 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 basically synthetic. You know, what is synthetic biology good for, based on your experience so far? And Jay, maybe you can you can start on this. Uh, I know you know uh, Juan referred earlier to you know your work on. On malaria or on or, or bioenergy, maybe you can talk a little bit in, in specifics about what it is you're exploring, and we'll use that as our starting point. Um, great. Well, thanks. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, so, one of the uh, things that we've been doing with synthetic biology is engineering microbes to produce interesting chemicals. So, drugs you uh, referred to an anti malarial drug, artemisinin, that's coming out this year. Uh, it's going to be produced, they'll make about uh, 100 million treatments a year. Uh, biofuels, there's been a lot of work on those. Um, those are what I would call more of the immediate applications. You have some of the more long-term applications, uh, engineering new materials, uh, engineering replacements for all the other products that we get from petroleum. All these, you pointed to the wood, well, it just so happens that that wood's covered with uh, a petroleum product, uh, and the cushion on the seat, well, the entire thing is made of a petroleum product, actually, uh, hey, and we're right. going to be running short of those <laughs> eventually, right? We might be able to replace some of those. And then we uh, we have uh, you know, two people here who've been involved, you know, on the on the agricultural side of things, or at least for you know, companies that are involved in the agricultural side of things. Um, I'm curious. Uh, you know, certainly, I think you know a common perception of uh, you know of American industry is is that uh, they're very focused on on near term payoff. And so I'm curious. Uh, first of all, you know. It, if you're here because you see near-term payoff to synthetic biology, and, and if not, um, you know, what 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 is the interest in synthetic biology to a to a company like like Monsanto? Um, so near-term for us is I think is is probably quite different than near-term uh, in manufacturing or around the other industries when the life cycle of our products are seven to ten years from um, proof of concept to commercialization. Um, and that doesn't include the um, several years of, of discovery work uh, to reach a proof of concept. So, so we're not going to see synthetic biology products. Uh, yeah. On, so on, you're, you're not going to like go, go to the grocery store and see that's you know, right. made with synthetic corn to, you know, yeah, next year. That, that's right. However, and in fact, I do believe that probably the, the earliest impact that synthetic biology will have on agriculture is going to be in the engineering of single cell microbes. And so as, as Juan said, we're a, we're a Mosaic. We, we've got our human side, and then the microbial plants are the same. It's no different above and below ground, and we're learning more and more about how those communities, that, that rhizosphere and phylosphere, are supporting the health of the plant. A plant can't live without that, and I think the potential, the early potential, um, could be in, in uh, engineering those microbes to provide inputs. Um, we all know agriculture is, is uh, tremendously um, resource-intensive. 
And so if, if we can um, use uh, some of the early work on single cell engineering, I think we're, we're a ways from multicellular organismal, organismal um, synthetic biology um, reaching uh, market, uh, marketplace, but I think that's where there could be tremendous near-term impact.